Good day, everyone. For today's lesson, we are going to talk about the verb and its components, which is the voice, aspect, and the mood. By the way, I am teacher Irene. So, what is verb? A verb is a word that tells an action. A verb tells what we do. So, walk, run, and jump, those are all verb. I ran outside. In Cebuano or Sinoguan ng Binisaya, it is Nidagan ko sa gawas. The word run or nidagan is a word that tells an action. Run is a verb. He reads a book. Or in sinukuan ng binisaya is nagbasa siya o libro. So, the word reads or nagbasa is a word that tells an action. So, reads is a verb. Next, the kids play in the playground. Or in sinukuan ng binisaya, ang mga bata kay nagdula sa playground. So, the word play or nagdula is a word that tells an action. So, play is a verb. So, those are examples of a verb. So, verb has its components. These are the voice, aspect, and the mood. Let's go on to the voice of the verb. So, the voice of the verb refers to the relationship between the subject and the action. It focuses on the function of the subject being either the doer or the receiver on the action. The voices of the verb are classified into two. These are the active voice and the passive voice. In active voice, we can identify it if a sentence has a subject that acts upon its verb. An active voice occurs when the subject of the sentence acts as the performer. Examples of active voice the three ladies sang a song. Sang is an active voice because you need to figure out who is actually doing the action or if the subject is doing an action. Another example of active voice, the teachers prepared the materials for their classes. So teachers is the subject doer of the action. Materials is the predicate receiver of the action. Passive voice. If a subject is a recipient of a verb's action, it is a passive voice. A passive voice indicated that the subject of the sentence is the receiver of the action. Example of passive voice. The song was sung by the three ladies. Was sung as a passive voice because the action is happening to the subject. Another example of passive voice. The materials were prepared by the teachers for their classes. Materials is a subject receiver of the action. Teachers is a predicate doer of the action. Let's go on to the aspect of the verb. So, aspect of the verb, it is the state of action of a verb. Okay, there are four aspects of the verb. These are the simple tense, perfect tense, progressive tense, and perfect progressive tense. Simple tense of the verb can be past tense, 
present tense and future tense. Past tense. It is the action that happened in the past. Simple present tense. Simple present tense indicates the action is happening at the present time or repeatedly done. Simple future tense is the action that is yet to happen. The perfect tense describes the finished action. These are the present perfect, the past perfect, and the future perfect tense. The present perfect tense describes an event that has already been completed in the present. The past perfect tense describes an event that occurred before a specific time in the past. The future perfect tense describes an action that will be completed by a specific time in the future. Another aspect of the verb is Progressive tense. Progressive tense indicates unfinished actions. The last aspect of the verb is the perfect progressive tense. The perfect progressive tense describes an action that was in progress but was then finished. So let's go to the mood of the verb. The mood of the verb is a property of verbs which shows the mood or attitude of the speaker. It is used to denote whether the speaker is stating a fact, asking a question, expressing a condition, or giving a command. There are herbs of mood of the verb. These are the indicative, imperative, and subjunctive. Indicative mood is used to make statements. It states an opinion or fact. Indicative mood can be used in the active and passive voice. There are some examples of indicative mood. First, did you finish your work? So, finish is an active voice that performs an indicative mood. Second, Jelly's new home was designed by a famous architect. Was designed is a passive voice that performs an indicative mood. Next is the imperative mood. Imperative mood makes a request or a command. There are some examples of imperative mood. First, shut the door. Next, lie down and wait a moment. Subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood is not used very often, but it is used in certain special constructions. Subjunctive mood is used to express suggestions, recommendations, advice, demands, commands, wishes, doubts, and alike. So, indicative, imperative, and subjunctive are the mood of the verb. So, let's compare indicative, imperative, and subjunctive mood of the verb. In indicative mood, Rose is singing a song. In imperative mood, sing a song. And in subjunctive mood, I suggest that Rose sing a song. So those are the examples of the mood of the verb that are indicative, imperative, and subjunctive mood. And there are some differences of it. And that's all for today's lesson. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for my next video. Keep safe. God bless us all. Bye!